Is there a real Chamber of Secrets? What lies inside the ancient Padmanabha Swami Temple in India? It's a mysterious door is protected by two massive painted cobras. It has no bolts, latches, or other visible means of entry. And it's believed that the door was sealed shut by sound waves from a secret chant lost in time. Hindu priests say that at present, there is no human capable of opening this door by executing the necessary chants. So what's inside? Jewels and gold? Spirits of the beyond? A portal? Ancient scrolls? Well, the secrets of the Padmanabhaswamy Temple run as deep as its history. And we're going to bring you the investigative research and remote viewing we can collect on it. Join me, Rob Counts, and John Vivanco for another metaphysical show that's out of this world. This is going to be an epic episode. <laughs> I have a feeling it is going to be. I had never even heard of the Padmanabha Swami temple before a good friend of mine brought it up and wanted to know what our opinion on this thing was. And as I started looking into this temple, it got weirder and weirder until you did some cursory remote viewing before our Naga episode. And then you were like, dude, I need more time to view this. Right. It's wild. Like it's a yeah. crazy story, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we don't hear a lot of what goes on in India, especially as it's, as it's related to these temples in general. I mean, this is huge news in India, what's going on with this temple, what's been going on with this temple. But, you know, for us, it's just, we don't hear about this. We don't get it here. Yeah, well, this... um. This Padmanabha Swami temple, I just want to say, I apologize to any of our um, Indian watchers out there or viewers if I am pronouncing this wrong. Uh, we're giving it our best shot. We've actually heard a number of different ways of pronouncing this. Um, and the best way is just to go ahead and, and say it. So. Just massacre it. Best way is just <laughs> massacre it. Just, just, yeah, and hope for the best, really. It's a Hindu temple that is dedicated to Vishnu. Now, Vishnu is, it's a deity in ancient Indian culture. There are six chambers or vaults, but possibly more in this temple. It's located in Kerala, India, very, very far south. So we're talking about kind of that tip in India. It is considered the world's richest Hindu temple, even according to the Guinness Book of World Records. Forbes actually has an article, and it was uh, a $1 trillion hidden treasure chamber is discovered at India's Sri Padmanabhaswamy Temple. Yeah, I think that the $1 trillion, um, honestly, I think it's way beyond that. I know that's, that's the estimate, but I, I think it's way beyond that. And I think it goes in, well, I know it goes into things that are you can't put a monetary value on. Well, my, my perspective on this, too, is like, well, first of all, when was the temple built? Do we know that? Um, yeah, we do know that. I mean, we should know that, but I wouldn't necessarily trust those time frames. This is this is kind of what I'm getting at right now is that I have a feeling that we're talking about if we're if, if we're talking about the amount of gold and riches and stuff that I think is there based on some of these estimates and stuff like that. I don't think this stuff was just from this civilization. It had to have been left over from a previous civilization, right? Like, I mean, how do you get that much riches for everybody at home watching right now? When we start going over some of the details of some of the things that are in these chambers, you're going to understand why I'm saying that. So I'm just going to keep going with revealing some of this data. But, right, exactly. Yeah. And, and what, what you're saying I mean, I know you don't know what the remote viewing data is because I haven't told you about it, but what, what you're saying is going down a path of where that temple couldn't have been created first. It's called the Golden Temple far back into history. So some think it was full of gold even in the distant past, which is what John and I were just talking about. And there's evidence the walls were even lined at one point with 
pure gold. And we're not sure if any of this has been looted at all. But yeah, there are stories of deities, like physical form deities visiting the people there, sometimes in disguise as children. And we'll get back to this later as well. Now, in 1680 AD, there was a miracle. A marauder planned to plunder the temple of its riches using mercenaries. But hundreds of divine serpents, the Naga, materialized and scared them away. The divine intervention inspired the locals to rise up and keep the mercenaries from trying again. Well, yeah, there's the there's the Naga coming in to protect, which is interesting. I mean, you know, if this is like uh, because, you know, we've seen that the Naga are a real thing, as in the last episode, they're a real entity, yeah. real being. So you got to wonder, like, how old is this story? And did the Naga step forward in order to block something? Yeah. And for those of you at home, if you haven't watched our Naga episode, the previous one to this, definitely recommend doing that because actually some of the things that they mention here, you and I discussed where where the Naga were capable of of kind of going in and out of, of dimensions. So it is, I mean, according to what we were discussing, possible that they materialized, actually materialized and scared them away. Now, after an extensive history, in 1750, the kingdom of Travancore under the Travancore family, dedicated the temple to Padmanabhaswami, the main deity of the temple. They swore each king and his descendants would be agents of the deity who would serve the kingdom. So the king's official titles had Sri Padmanabha Dasa before the names. Many statues and carvings to Vishnu, a.k.a. Padmanabha, Padmanabhaswami. So Vishnu was like uh, one of these forms. So there's also carvings in the temple of serpents. There are shrines and idols to many other beings there as well. It's quite fascinating, to not only like read and study the mythology or what they say is mythology around these temples, but also when you get to this idea of these um, other deities and other gods sort of in competition with each other on on getting the people to only worship at their temple. You get back to this time frame of what we would call prehistory and the way the gods interacted with the, each other and the people in these stories, right? When we get to this particular Hindu temple, we're coming from that time frame where the gods were like relevant, right? So when you speak of the Nagas and that the marauder and whatnot coming forth, you know, because we've remote viewed a lot of this, it's like my mind tends to go down that path of, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, they did that. <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, oh, yeah, the, the Naga, Naga probably did do that. The other thing, too, is that in the astral world, you can create astral tools. A person can create astral tools. The astral world takes a bit of effort, belief, and imagination in order to create things there. So for instance, like I've taught courses before where, where we've had during the duration of the course, let's say the course is like a month or two months, every night a person, when they go to sleep, they, they, they begin to create in their mind's eye, a location, right? A house in a, whatever they, you know, whatever they want, a beautiful location. And they go there every night. And when they go there, they imagine every tiny little aspect of it. Okay. So then all these people are working on their own location, right? Every night. And then at the end of the course, we have sort of an open house where everyone in the class on specific nights gets to go to that other person's location and experience it, right? They don't know because everybody's told you don't say anything about your location, what it looks like or anything. They have no idea what it looks like. And then when we are uh, gone through the open houses, people talk about what they had created. And it always lines up with the experience a person had when they go to that person's location, right? So always. So, and that is the creation of something that's astral with one mind. Now think about if a culture believes in a certain entity, the creation and expansion of that entity, it being an astral aspect of their consciousness that they can create, that can take on a life of its own. 
when you get to the Naga, we looked at the Naga. We could usually tell the Naga were a real thing, but there are others that are solely the creation of the consciousness, the group consciousness that temples have been built around. And now when the thing wasn't a thing before, it is now a thing. Right. Right. So and that's actually, thrown into the mix too, right? Right. And there this is actually, you know, what John is talking about is not a fictional thing. I mean, all over all over the world, there are like weird beings that get seen after people worship them. And it's like the collective energy of human beings adding to something and creating a tulpa. We've talked about this on many previous episodes, but like, yeah, it's it's that's wild, you know, and 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 who knows again, back to this temple, who knows the long history of this thing and, and what was really going on there. Right. So this this Travancore family that we mentioned um, the temple and its assets belong to Padmanabhaswamy, once controlled by a trust headed by the Travancore family. Travancore family being like the best, you know, comparison maybe would be like the Merovingians in Europe, which were like a huge royal family that just ruled for a really long time. Boy, yeah. have I got stories about the Merovingian beginning. <laughs> Separate episode. That'd yeah. be crazy because there's a lot to talk about there. They're the ones that are supposedly in charge of this temple. And so there's always been this like big rift between the state and the Travancore family on who actually controls the temple. Because obviously, if there's trillions of dollars in there, somebody's going to have the bright idea of like, hey, we could be rich in a second if we just somebody lets us into the vault and we literally steal a couple of things. In 2011, the Supreme Court of India directed archaeologists to open the secret chambers of the temple to inspect what was inside. There were six vaults, A through F, but two more were possibly found in 2014, and these vaults were called G and H. The vaults were opened for the purpose of, of making inventories. Yeah, sure. And all except B, G, and H were opened. Now, the royal family, which is the Travancore family, said that opening chamber B would be a bad omen, and it's pretty impossible to open anyway. It's unclear if these chambers were opened in the 1800s. The 1930s uh, are another time where they were considered to be um, opened. Okay, now the mysterious door in the temple. We've got to get into this a little bit. It's protected by two massive cobras painted on it, and it has no bolts, latches, or any other means of entry. And it's believed that the door was sealed shut by sound waves from a secret chant lost in time. And Hindu priests say that at present, there is no human capable of opening this door by executing these chants properly. It's said to house unimaginable wealth and can only be entered by high-level priests familiar with the knowledge of chanting a special Garuda mantra. And Garuda is, as you know, we talked about this in the Naga episode, is a Hindu deity who is primarily depicted as the Mount Vahana of the Hindu god Vishnu. Vishnu kind of rides Garuda, but but he is a deity in and of himself. When you get to uh, these old temples and in Tibet, in India, there is a lot of legend that they were built using sound, right? So it, it does, it does exist. It is something that is a lost technology that people don't know about these days, but it is something they can do. It's, people are building and selling and in, in scientific, in the scientific realm, they're experimenting in certain areas, they're experimenting a lot with sound generated levitation. And you could actually buy a little apparatus that uh, on either side are these two little module plates that create sound. And you can put little balls in there and they'll levitate because as the sound's going forward, they're, they're creating, again, a standing wave. And within the standing waves, that little ball will stay stuck in the middle of the air, right? So, so this is just like something that, that humans are beginning to figure out, at least publicly at the publicly, moment. Yeah. But right. it's something that they knew of that they used in the past. And they're creating a standing wave and then directing the sound as that standing wave is holding it. 
to certain places. Now, we'll get into the known contents of the temple before going hard on this chamber of secrets that we've been we've been alluding to. There is an estimated 22 billion worth of gold and jewels allegedly stored in the underground vaults. Six of the chambers, as we were talking about before, have already been open, yielding approximately 22 billion worth of gold in the form of diamonds, jewelry, golden utensils, weapons, golden statues, golden elephants, and diamond necklaces. Are you liking this episode so far? We're not even halfway through. Many speculate that the contents hidden inside the mysterious chamber go far beyond materialistic riches, even though priceless antiquities made of gold and diamonds await on the other side. We covered otherworldly beings and who might have known about the chamber's existence. It, like J.K. Rowling had to have researched this thing because in that movie chamber of secrets it's all about a, cha a secret chamber that harry breaks into using like snake language basically he gets in and it's guarded by a huge serpent we covered vimanas and anti-gravity research there really isn't a problem of, of uh, anti-gravity it, the problem is that it's being suppressed, but there are so many people that know about it and are working on it that it's inevitable that very soon this is, it's gonna have to be leaked out. Plus we asked, if someone knew about advanced Vimana technology, where would it lead them today? You know what's funny is it's like, it's not, it's not new just because like we're aware of what's been going on since the late 1800s, but look where we are right now. Right. The, the, the most incredible advancements that humans have made have been an iPhone. To watch the rest of this episode on the ancient chamber of secrets in the Pat Manabaswabi temple, hidden vaults, and buried treasure, click on the link in the description to subscribe to the metaphysical.tv. The Mystery Junkie tier gets you access to all our exclusive video podcast episodes. Your support means we can keep doing these deep dives, and it also means we can design more merch and make more awesome products like our metaphysical coffee, which I got to say is pretty delicious. And you can get it at the link in the description. Thanks so much for your support. And we hope you thought this episode was as out of this world as we did.